Today I wanted to talk all about zinc. How does zinc help your body? Should you take zinc supplements? And if so, is 50 milligrams a day too much? Hey guys, my name is Dr. Sam. I wanted to do a shout out for Tui B who asked me to make a video on zinc. Thank you, Tui. This is a really interesting topic, especially with everything happening in the world right now. I thought I'd touch on what zinc is really useful for versus not so helpful for, what are the symptoms of zinc deficiency, and most importantly, should you take zinc supplements? Firstly, what is zinc and where do you get it from? Zinc is an essential trace element, which means that the body cannot generate it on its own or store it. It has to come from your diet. Zinc is extremely important for the chemical reactions that happen in your body. It's most commonly found in meat and fish in high quantities, but you can also get it from plants. And nowadays, breakfast cereals and baking flour are fortified with synthetic zinc. I'll link all the foods you can get zinc from in the description. How does zinc help your body? You might already know that zinc is very helpful to our immune system and works well to fight off infections. In repeated studies, zinc reduces the length of common cold symptoms by about a third when taken in the first 24 hours of becoming sick. It also helps heal wounds, helps us grow, is important for taste, smell and good vision, and it is one of the building blocks needed for our cells to make proteins and molecules. What are the symptoms of zinc deficiency? Severe zinc deficiency is actually quite rare, but it can occur in people with alcohol addiction and anorexia and those with inflammatory bowel disease or in breastfed infants from zinc deficient mothers. I'll list all the other causes in the description. Symptoms of zinc deficiency depend on how deficient you are. So these symptoms may be mild if the zinc level is just a little low. Symptoms can include chronic diarrhea, decreased immunity, thinning hair, decreased appetite, skin rashes, mood disturbances, dry skin, and impaired wound healing. Is your zinc level too low? Unfortunately, blood tests don't tell you how much zinc is in the, each of your body's cells, so having a normal blood zinc level can still mean that you're deficient, although it is a very useful test to show if you have too much zinc in your system. If I'm wondering about a patient's zinc levels, I'll normally order a barrage of other mineral tests like iron, copper, vitamin D, B12 and magnesium, as these vitamins and minerals all affect each other. What about the zinc taste test or zinc challenge? Actually, I was really interested to find this out myself as these tests are quite cheap and are readily available to get online. Now, please don't hate me because I could only find one paper assessing this from 2012, which showed that the zinc taste test was no good. The test isn't specific or sensitive enough to measure marginal zinc levels in people, which is really disappointing. What conditions can zinc help? Well, firstly, it's definitely useful for reducing the time you are sick with coughs and colds if you can get onto zinc in the first day of having symptoms. Lozenges have been really well studied and the recommendation is to take a minimum of 75 milligrams per day throughout the cold. Lozenges do taste quite gross, but they will help you. Secondly, speeding up wound healing. Zinc is often used to help treat burns, diabetic foot ulcers and pressure ulcers of the skin. Thirdly, daily zinc supplements seem to help some age-related diseases. In particular, it helps age-related macular degeneration of the eyes, it decreases infection rates in older people and it reduces the risk of pneumonia. Fourthly, it's good for the skin and reduces acne by targeting inflammation, stopping oil gland activity and slowing the growth of bacteria that cause pimples. What conditions does zinc not help? Hair loss. Now I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater when I say this because for individuals with really decent zinc deficiency and alopecia, zinc supplements do reverse the hair loss. For men with male pattern hair loss or those with alopecia areata, zinc study results are extremely mixed and there is no agreement about whether zinc helps. Zinc supplements also don't seem to help prevent type 2 diabetes or treat tinnitus, a blood disorder called thalassemia or taste problems. Should you start zinc supplements? All right, let's be honest, this is the question we all want answered. 
Worst case scenario is if you take too much zinc in the form of supplements, so I'm talking about more than 200 milligrams of elemental zinc a day, this can cause stomach pain, nausea, vomiting and diarrhea. If you are chronically taking higher levels of zinc, so between 50 or 150 milligrams a day, this may interfere with your body's absorption of other minerals like copper and iron. I personally like to get my zinc naturally from my diet, but I know that this may not be possible if you are vegetarian or vegan or you have problems absorbing nutrients because of a medical condition that affects your gut. So in this instance, I think it is worth taking zinc supplements. Which type of zinc should you get? So zinc supplements come in different forms as zinc sulfate, gluconate, acetate, picolinate, orotate and citrate and the differences between them are subtle and overall some are slightly better absorbed than others, they have slightly different side effect profiles, they have different prices and they have different amounts of elemental zinc in them. I wouldn't get too stressed over which you should choose as they will generally do the same thing. Just know that if you don't like one particular form you can swap to another type and just see how you go. They come as capsules, tablets, lozenges and nasal sprays. I'd personally avoid the nasal sprays because they've been shown to worsen your sense of smell. Is 50 milligrams of zinc each day too much? If you have proven zinc deficiency, then 50 milligrams a day of elemental zinc is the normal dose, but it should really be given under medical supervision. This is to make sure you don't get toxic on too much zinc. If you have a cold, then you can take 75 milligram lozenges once a day for the week or so that you are sick. Otherwise, as a daily supplement, the recommended daily intake is 11 milligrams of elemental zinc for adult men and 8 milligrams for adult women. Please always check on the bottle how much elemental zinc is in it. For example, zinc sulfate to 20 milligrams is equivalent to 50 milligrams of elemental zinc. Side effects of zinc supplements it's quite common to get an upset stomach nausea, tummy pain or diarrhea so please take the supplements with food to reduce this. You may also notice a headache, tiredness or an unpleasant taste in your mouth. <laughs> Other cautions about zinc, you need to be careful if you have recently developed kidney problems or you have a condition called hemochromatosis as zinc can build up to unsafe levels. Also zinc interacts with a few prescription medications which I'll list in the description for you. Phew! <laughs> Overall my take home is that zinc is an important nutrient that we often overlook. If you're finding you are getting run down a lot with many infections, I'd get checked over by your doctor first and then have some basic bloods taken and then think about zinc supplements. Please give this video a like if you found it helpful, hit the subscribe button for new videos every single week and hit the bell to get notified when I post new videos on Tuesdays. Please let me know in the comments what you enjoyed about this video or what you want to learn more about and feel free to check out some of my other videos on supplements. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next week and thank you so much for watching.